Chapter 2 At first, I thought it was a standard coyote. Bad for me. Though there weren't any fleet warrants out on me, any captain who was only half-bright would know enough to order me held for questioning. Then the whole mess of extradition would begin. Different guards, different cages. But that looked pretty good at the time. Behind me, the Lindrill prison had come alive. Alarms, coded sound beacons, shouting. All could clearly be heard. They kicked up huge clouds of dirt as they ran. With a last quick glance over my shoulder, I stepped up onto the ramp of the coyote and prepared to be arrested. There were two crewmen on ramp duty. A big one with white blonde hair and walrus mustache, and a short one with dark shiny hair and dark shiny eyes. The little one was going to be the problem, as the little ones usually are. Apparently, lost in conversation. They hadn't noticed me. As soon as I was on their ramp, though, they perked up. The big one seemed appalled by my putrid coloring. The small one, on the other hand, displayed a grin of amused disgust. Good God, who the hell is that? said the blonde. <laughs> you mean, what the hell is that? replied the shrimp. I figured groveling would do it. Kind sirs, I began plaintively, managing to both bow and scurry a few steps closer at the same time. Help me, I beg you. The shrimp didn't buy it. Hold it there, he said. Who are you? asked the blonde. I thought I caught a touch of sympathy in the blonde's voice. I turned all my attention to him. I'm a man of earth, same as you. I've been kept here by these. He's a damned escapee, Thor, snapped the short one. Look at him. He's covered with their salt. He's been in the prison mine. Thor frowned. They use a mine for a prison? Of course, idiot. This is Lindril. How'd you break out, Earthman? The sneer he gave me to Earthman was his first major mistake. There was an explosion in the mine. I found the way open. I simply ran without thinking. Then I saw your ship. Please, sir, I wailed, managing a few more steps toward them. You must take me aboard. You cannot leave me in this place. <laughs> like hell we can't. Move it, convict. You're stinking up our ship, snarled the shrimp and took a menacing step down toward me. That was his second major mistake. Or the third, if you count his coming that step closer. For that last step gave me a much better view. This was no fleet coyote. Not with a crewman as sloppy as this. His robe was dirty, unwashed. His hair needed a good shower. His tunic was frayed about the collar. No officer, any officer would let such slovenliness get by, which left only one answer. There weren't any officers around to object. Mutiny, most likely. That or outright theft. Whichever. This was no ship of fleet. This was a pirate ship. That changed everything. Thor eyed me for several moments in silence. Then, I'm gonna call Borglin. See if we can take him in. The shrimp was furious. Are you out of your mind? Why do you want to get involved in this? Uh-oh. Look here. I knew we should have kicked him off. Both men looked past me at something. I knew what it had to be, but I turned round anyway. Reinforcements had arrived. An even dozen guards stood in a ragged semicircle at the base of the ramp. I shuddered. I'd never seen that many of them all together at one time. One was enough. Damn. They were big. Monsters. They made no move for me up the ramp. They knew better. Awesome as they were to an unarmed prisoner, they were nothing against a starship. Almost anything aboard could be a monster eater. They simply stood there, waiting. Thor took one look at them and stepped toward the interior of the hatch. I'm calling, he said. Don't be stupid, snapped the shrimp. Borglin doesn't want to be bothered with Lindril affairs. Thor stopped, gestured at the line of guards. They can't do anything to us, 
he said calmly. Yeah? What about the rest of the planet? Besides, this guy's not worth the effort. Well, said Thor slowly, turning back toward the hatch. I'm not giving him to them. You're crazy, Thor. What are we going to do with this gray scum anyway? Scum, in my present condition, was too true to be funny. And his last major mistake. I took a couple of steps toward him and whispered so that Thor, just inside the hatch, couldn't hear. Listen to me, you slimy little pig. I croaked. I know why you don't want me on board. You're sick of being the ship shrimp. You're sick of knowing there isn't a man on board who couldn't rip your balls off and shove him up your nose. Thor may not have heard, but the shrimp sure did. His eyes all but bugged out, his face got red, his chest expanded. I thought he was going to explode right there. But he didn't. He waited till he got his stinger out of its strap. Then he flew at me down the ramp. The <laughs> bastard was quick, very quick. Worse than that. He knew how to use a stinger. It may look like a club, but it's a whole lot more. Instant paralysis at best. I had to jump sideways to avoid his first lunge. I teetered at the edge of the ramp a moment before regaining balance, and, and out of the corner of my eye, I noticed the line of guards surge forward an eager step. I reminded myself I'd be theirs on the ground. Not only did I have to win unarmed, but I had to do it only on the ramp. His second lunge was wild, but still too close. I felt the burning tingle as the stinger brushed past my cheek. I had to move. I fainted left, ducked another lunge, and slapped him twice on his left cheek. Slapping is better than fists, and usually enrages enemies. The shrimp got so mad that his next swing of the stinger threw him off balance. I stepped in again as he fell to one knee. I blocked a hook at the wrist and slammed the butt of my palm under his chin. He squealed as his teeth cracked together. Then I backhanded him across the throat. He was tough. Even as he fell, he managed to graze my knee with a swipe from the stinger. The pain seared up and down my thigh. I bellowed like some animal and lost it. Maybe him personally. Maybe the prison nightmare. Maybe myself. Whatever it was, it was strong. I saw nothing, heard nothing, cared even less. Hate rode. I broke his arm, the arm that held the stinger, twice. Once across my knee, once by just stomping on it. He may have screamed then. He may have screamed all along, but I couldn't hear. I was too busy pulverizing his face and neck and chest, and... and then it was over, and he lay there, half on and half off the ramp covered with blood and gray lens salt. I stood over him, breathing heavily, until... Wham! And I was face down on the sun-scorched metal of the ramp. Thor had driven his foot halfway through my spine. I looked up at him, stunned, my head spinning, my back beginning to throb. He was looking at what was left of the shrimp. His eyes were wide, aghast. His chest heaved. You filthy! He blurted and kicked me again. He caught me just right, just under my left ear. I spun backward in midair into a full somersault and crashed onto the other edge. Dimly, distantly, I saw the guards now directly beneath me and reaching up, up for me. I clawed, scrambled my way back onto the ramp. I got a knee up onto the edge. I heaved. Thor was waiting. I saw the black boot rear back, saw his weight shift, thought it finished. Hold it! Shouted an incredibly deep and commanding voice. Everyone froze, and I mean everyone. Thor, the guards, and me, still clinging to the ramp with two bleeding hands and a knee. It took me a second to realize that there was no electronic speaker involved. It was simply the unamplified voice of Sar Borglin, chief mutineer and pirate, commanding. A few breaths later, and all relaxed somewhat. And I, scared of everyone in sight, but especially the guards, scrambled all the way up onto the safety ramp.
The guards paused a moment, then resumed their ragged formation at the foot of the ramp. Borglin found out what was what in a hurry. Away he had. I told him some smoke about being Bin Lal, a missionary from the Church of Episcoblu to the heathen Lindrel. Lal had been a cellmate of mine, jailed, caged rather, for blasphemy, so I figured it was a pretty good story. Borglin didn't come near buying it. I thought he was going to toss me off right then. He would have too, I think, but Thor saved me. Thor didn't mean to. He meant just the opposite. Started sputtering furiously about poor little busted-up prawn, the shrimp, lying there on the ramp. How I must have jumped him. How prawn was only trying to help, and this dirty scum jumped him. Seeing the stinger already unstrapped and out, as well as knowing prawn as he probably did, made it easy for Borglin to see the lie in the ambush theory. Also, Borglin was irritated at Thor for butting in unasked. He didn't listen long. Then, with a sharp, shut up, that made everybody's mouth close, he walked down and looked at me. Looking up from the position of a crumpled, wretched heap was no way to meet Borglin. To begin with, he was a real-life titan, well over two meters tall, with long, dark brown hair and a dark brown beard and a dark brown star-tanned face. He had a bulk to him that was, well, ridiculous. He was damn near as big as a lindral guard. In fact, everything about Borglin was big. His body, his voice, his appetites, his plans. There was something eerie about him, too. His eyes. In the midst of that great flat face, of that huge forehead and forest of beard, were the two most exquisitely beautiful blue eyes I had ever seen on a human creature. He was a handful. He peered at me, bent over with massive hands on muscular thighs, and made a decision. Bring him he said crisply. Thor started to speak, thought about it, thought he would shut up and live instead, all in the one brief half-second glance he got from the boss. But someone did object. A dry horse croak erupted from below. It was the warden from the prison cage, on the scene at last. It seemed that everyone else was there as well. All the various penal assistants to the warden, most of the major civic officials, and Quite a few spectators. The clearing at the foot of the ramp was a small field of long green robes fluttering in the breeze. The warden was lindral eloquent. He began by welcoming Borglin's seeds and promising prayers of virility. Borglin was silent. Only momentarily nonplussed, the warden continued. He spoke of the great gulf between stars, the great gulf between beings, he talked about the further greatness of communication and said he knew that Borglin would agree. Borglin was silent. Now a little nervous, the warden went on about sovereignty, about different cultures and customs being included therein. The warden implied possible disfavor, lindral-wise, concerning breaches of that authority. He meant me, of course. When Borglin was silent about that, the warden stepped back. The, call him Major, of the city, then stepped forward in his regal best. Gold trimmed his green robes. He carried a solid platinum hoop over a shoulder. The Major was Lindral Tough. He threatened Borglin's ship. He threatened his men. He threatened his seeds. Lastly, he threatened himself. Borglin stood there a while in the ensuing tense silence, watching the lindrel. Then he took one step toward the throng and pointed a thick finger at the end of a thicker arm, directly at the major, and said, Go away. And they went away, every one of them. They didn't even have to think about it. An hour later, in orbit, I stepped into the fresher. Two hours later, now out of orbit, I stepped out. Except for a couple of spots, I was no longer gray. I was pink, actually, like a pinched baby, but still better than gray. Borglin called me into the captain's stateroom after I had eaten. 
he was surprisingly courteous, asking me all about myself and commiserating about my prison time. I spent well over an hour inventing a past. It became a lot of fun and toward the end, terribly convincing as I got into the role. Throughout, Borglin said little, merely nodding and agreeing or even chuckling at some instant escapade from my youth. And then, after all my lies and all my talk and all the work involved, he leaned back in his chair at last and said, with a sickening smile, Well, Jack, I'm glad you got that off your chest. Now, do you want a job? So, he had known. All along he had known that I was Jack Crow. <laughs>